International Women's Day from Tally Allen Scottish Police College. This is the image that Police Scotland wants to promote, a progressive employer where women can thrive. Hi, happy International Women's Day. But it's been a far from happy experience for some. It was just horrendous. I was, I was knocking on every door for help. I was pretty much told um, that I just had to kind of pull my big girl pants on um, and get on with it. It's a boys club. They say that it doesn't exist, but it does. The higher ranking officers will look after their own. With a workforce of 24,000, Police Scotland is the second largest force in the UK. 40% of the staff are women. But an independent review last year found what it described as a canteen culture where racist and sexist attitudes went unchallenged. Now a tribunal has provided another damning insight. Rona Malone loved her job. After seven years in frontline policing, she joined a firearms unit, working alongside the only other female officer. We took the opportunity to work together and we got great results you know, from that shift that we worked together. So, you know, we were on a high. But that high came to an abrupt end when Rona was told she could no longer work with another woman. Her inspector said it made more sense from what he described as a balance of testosterone perspective. I laughed. I actually laughed at it. And then, after a few hours, it sunk in. Do you know, it's a tough environment. It is a really tough environment. And I was so committed to that job. I loved that job. And to get that email basically said that I wasn't good enough. It's been a long and lonely battle for Rona since then. An employment tribunal has now found that she was victimized through a bungled grievance process. It accepted her workplace had a sexist boys club culture. Her inspector had posted nude images of women on an office WhatsApp group. But victory has come at a personal cost. She took early retirement last year. I'll never forgive them for that. I will never forgive them for taking my mental health, for taking my career and the impact it's had on my family. There was no need for it. None of this. All they had to do was deal with my complaint. Rona Malone's solicitor believes her case reveals a culture of denial in Police Scotland. It cannot be said, in my view, that it's a, an example of just a few bad apples because that case involved victimisation by around half a dozen uh, individuals within Police Scotland over several departments and in all ranks of policing. Is it nice? Like Rona, Leslie Ann Kennedy loved her job on the front line. She was allowed to reduce her hours when she came back from maternity leave, but says she was put under huge pressure to return to her full-time post as soon as possible. If I had a broken leg, it would be a case of, oh, that's fine, you've got a broken leg, we can see there's something wrong. Um, when it's something that they can't visibly see, there seems to be this attitude that they're saying that um, she's hanging the pee, you're kind of hanging it out to can I get away with doing the front line stuff or you're looking for a cushy number and, and that's really was never the case. Leslie Ann's mental health deteriorated but she felt she got little sympathy from her bosses. I was driving to work in the mornings feeling like if I just run into the lorry in front of me it'll all be, it'll all be done. Did they know that you felt suicidal? It was very much can I just glazed over. Um, but yes. What was your reaction to that? I just, it kind of fed into the way I was already feeling that I didn't really matter. After 17 years in Police Scotland, Leslie felt she had no choice but to take early retirement. You left in 2019? Yeah. Do you think things have changed? No. I know people who are struggling with their mental health who are in posts, protected posts, because there's kind of a similar thing. They've been pushed to get back to the front line and the general attitude is they're just in there looking for a cushy number and it's still happening, it's still very much the attitude. So no, I don't think things have changed. Some of the bosses were like, you know, you sure you want to do this? This woman left the police two years ago but asked to keep her identity hidden because she hasn't told her children why she left. 
At the start of her career, she was sexually harassed by a sergeant for 10 months. He used to walk towards me with his tongue out like he was going to try and kiss me. You know, his face would be right beside me if I'd, you know, if I'd been at the gym or something before work. And he would be like, oh, well, I should have missed my chance there. I should have been in the shower with you, helping you clean off, things like that. It was, it was just inappropriate and dirty. And it made me feel dirty. She complained, but she says she was persuaded to drop the case. Years later, she was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress caused by the harassment. It destroyed me as a person. It took away all my confidence. I, turned my... I looked at myself and thought, what does he see in me that makes him think it's okay to do this to me? And I started to question everything, how I was dressing, how I was looking. I just lost all confidence and I never got it back. We asked for an interview with the Chief Constable, Ian Livingston, but were told he was not available. In a statement, the Deputy Chief Constable, Fiona Taylor, said, Sexism, misogyny and discrimination of any kind are deplorable and unacceptable. They have no place in society and no place in policing. Progress has been made, but there remains much work to do. We're bringing additional focus to ensure our culture is welcoming and inclusive, including additional independent scrutiny and oversight by an independent review group. Rona Malone is now trying to focus on a new career as an estate agent. But since winning her tribunal, she's been inundated with inquiries from other women in the police seeking her advice. It seems Rona is no longer fighting a battle on her own.